What we really wanted to do is talk to you a little bit about our transformation plans and our locality plan and why we actually want to transform services within Rochdale. And fundamentally, the reason for that is written on here. I don't know how... Can you see the slides at the back? No. Depends, probably, yeah. OK. So, um, just to... So, I'll, I'll read out our vision uh, for Rochdale locality. So, that is, by 2021... We will have reduced health and well-being inequalities between our most most and least deprived communities and between the borough and, and the rest of Greater Manchester. So we really are looking at improving the services for our local population and that's what our transformation plans are all about. Fundamentally, we want to do that by um, getting help to people as early as possible so that we can support people to start to help themselves um, we want to make sure that care is really joined up and in the right place at the right time for people, which is absolutely crucial. And we want to, probably most importantly, support communities to really develop and become resilient communities with resilient individuals in them. So that's our, that's our absolute purpose. And since the middle of last year, we've been working on our transformation fund bid to help us to actually design those services and transform the services. And we submitted our bid at the end of March, and we've now been um, not quite formally made aware, but almost almost there, that we, we are, will receive approximately £25 million to support us in Rochdale to really transform services. And that's a significant amount of money that lets us uh, support and develop even further. So just in terms of our journey so far. So last March we came and talked to you about where we were at with our plans. And at the time we came, we hadn't submitted our transformation fund bid. And we ran through some of our current thinking around what that bid would look like with you. And what was really important for us is that the feedback that we got around that plan was that actually we had comments like, this is really joined up. This sounds so sensible. Why haven't you done this years ago? Actually, all this starts to really make sense. So that was really positive for us, that we we really got the message that we were, we were going in the right direction and trying to do the right things. A light show going on, the lasers will be out in a minute. Uh, so uh, so we, we felt really encouraged by that, and that was really helpful. You did give us some feedback that we needed to take away and think about. So what we've done is we've looked at that, and when we do the table discussions today, we'll give you some feedback about some of the things that you said to us and the way that that's helped us shape our thinking going forward. So... Then throughout April and throughout up and up to September, we were working really, really hard to firm up and clarify with Greater Manchester who who are determine how much money we get to uh, to uh, transform our services to really make sure that they understood exactly what we wanted to do in Rochdale and understand the really good work that we were building on that we already do here. And I think it's fair to say that our bid was really, really positively received and we had some really great feedback. We've had some discussions about money, but that would be expected, wouldn't it? But fundamentally, in terms of what we want to do, the feedback and, and the discussions across with GM have been really, really positive. Hence why we've been uh, awarded approximately 25 million. So during uh, September... This is where now we're starting to really get into our mobilisation phase. So this is where we're starting to deliver what we've had in our plans. And that's why we've come back to talk to you today, because we want to start really firming up our plans and start linking in with members of the public as much as we can um, to finally shape the development of those plans. So that's what today is all about, and we really welcome your involvement in that. Our themes... This is, I know we shared this last time we were here and uh, I don't propose to stand here and talk through it, but this was a bit of a reminder to people uh, for what we actually wanted to put in our plans. So just really, really briefly, on, on each of, well not on every table, but on, on five of the tables we have our um, theme leads. So the people that are responsible for taking these themes forward and delivering them. So what I'm going to ask them to do now really quickly is I'm going to introduce you to the theme lead and ask him to give you a couple of sentences about what really matters about that theme. 
Okay, so the, the first one is prevention and access, and that's the lady standing right at the back, that's Susan Crutchley. The prevention and access is actually the bedrock um, of the locality plan. What we want to do in prevention is help people to stay well, to help them to change behaviours, but to make sure that we have the right place, the right care in the right place at the right time through our access programme. So on tables we will be able to discuss that and as Sandra said, take what from what you said before and help us to shape our programme. Um, hi, I'm Diane David and I'm the theme lead for the neighbourhood and primary care theme. Um, now, the neighbourhood is actually about looking at delivering services within a neighbor, on a neighbourhood basis. So if we're going to build resistant and resilient communities, then we have to respond to the needs within those communities. So we've already got the start of an integrated neighbourhood team in terms of health and social care working together. And this theme is about expand, expanding that wider, bringing in home care providers, care homes, and other areas of delivery. Okay, thank you, Diane. Good evening, everyone. I'm Sajju Ahmed. I'm the programme manager within primary care. So just to tell you what primary care is, it's basically uh, the first point of contact most people have to healthcare services. So it's accessing people like your GPs, your community pharmacists, your dentists. And what we're trying to do is make sure we improve access so, we, so you guys as patients have more access to GPs and more appointments, but also we make sure we have a sustainable primary care going forward because we've got some challenges within primary care whereby we need to get more GPs, more nurses, so, so that we could get more appointments offered to you guys. Thank you. Um, Jen? Hi, yeah. I'm Jenny Hopes. I'm a commissioning manager for principally planned care, but I do a bit of urgent care as well. Um, I don't think it's any secret in the news that there's huge pressures in A&E and when you ring 999 or 111 um, in terms of having an... Um, be able to see somebody quickly and um, if you are admitted to hospital in terms of the treatment that you have there and how quickly you're able to go home. And in terms of um, planned care, which is when you um, are referred for a specialist uh, treatment, usually with a booked appointment, either in the community, for example, physio, or in a hospital setting, for example, cancer <coughs> services, um, there's a lot of things that we think you can do to improve uh, the treatment um, that you receive um, to make sure that you have a lot more of your assessment, and diagnosis and treatment on one day um, and again to sort of make sure that people um, can go home uh, more quickly and recover better. Oh. <laughs> Hi, I'm Kylie Thornton. Um, I'm not actually the lead, however, I am a programme manager for the children's theme. Children's really runs throughout all of the elements that have been spoke about today, um, but specifically we're really looking about how we can integrate clinical services, all of the provision that is provided by our statutory partners, and more so how we can really think about our preventative services and all the other things that everybody else has spoke about, so that we've got better outcomes for the young people and children of Rochdale. Thank you. So I don't need to introduce myself again, but um, in terms of mental health, we want to change the way that people access services and have an offer that's sort of uh, uh, the living well hub approach, which is where people might have a severe and enduring mental health problem, but actually what's bothering them is just a day-to-day -day thing and they can access it um, and go and get the support that they need and then also have the same out of hours. Um, so when people go into crisis, that they can get the support that they need. So that's the mental health plan. Thank you. That, that's our themes and, and later on there'll be an opportunity to choose a couple of those themes that you think are really important to you and, and sit and discuss them in a lot more detail on the table discussion so I um, um, hope that you'll enjoy and enjoy doing that. Okay, so one of the key things around our, um, our transformation plans is absolutely the concept of our neighbourhoods and how we... Uh, how we support thriving individuals within thriving communities and how we offer early help at the right time, in the right place, in the right way for people. And this uh, picture tries to just demonstrate where that help will be. Um, 
appreciate it's a bit of a strange picture, but basically the message is, is quite simple. And the message is that there will be, within each one of the townships, the plan is to have a hub of, that we call an a, a e, I always I always get this wrong, easy access and support for you, or easy hub um, that's that's there to really support that community in a in a number of ways really. So just to briefly touch on on that and on the tables we'll talk in more detail. So say um, often we know that health issues are not just linked to help not just linked to medically. So sometimes they are caused by poor housing or unemployment and can lead to all sorts of different issues. So what we're doing is developing what we call in a directory of services which will signpost people more clearly to the appropriate service, be that medical or otherwise. So say for example, uh, just to make that a little bit real, so I have asthma, if I went to my GP because I my asthma was exacerbating or being much worse and I couldn't seem to control it, if I threw into that conversation actually the housing where I lived was really damp and horrible, and actually, he might think, well, do you know what? That's that's not helping your asthma. What I normally wouldn't be able to do anything about that. But with our directory of services and our connectors within the hubs, the GP would have the option of uh, referring me to a hub, and that could lead to me being linked with a housing uh, service, which could look at my wider needs other than health. So that's what this is about, bringing all those services together rather than just necessarily always focusing on health. So that's one of the areas around the hubs. The other thing is really to bring communities closer together and offer a potential space for people to use in, in a way to help that community thrive. So it might be a couple of people have, a, I don't know, a, a reading group or something like that. They've suffered with mental health. That's what they've done. They've come together to to work together and support each other and we would have what we call in at the moment community builders who might work with those individuals and say well how do we expand this how do we how do we help you to make that bigger and reach out to more people so that's the sort of thing that we really really would love to do and that's really the concept of the hubs okay um, what we've also uh, got in there, if you're wondering what INT is, that's our integrated neighbourhood teams. And that's where we start to really look at wrapping the care that people need around those individuals, and rather than expecting individuals to navigate a care system, a health and care system that can be complicated. So um, just this is, you know, I appreciate the back, you're not even going to be able to see this, so apologies for that. But basically, what this is saying is, we are use, we will have integrated neighbourhood teams, and those integrated neighbourhood teams will wrap services around individuals to meet their needs, rather than the person navigating. So we've got all sorts of links into that, including mental health, home care, primary care, nursing care, uh, carers and a whole host of services that wrap around those individuals. I appreciate that's a little bit busy, but it's just to give you the idea of what we're trying to achieve. Okay. So what we really want to do today um, is talk to you about what you said to us back in March, where we've taken that forward and what that means for our current plans and then really start to get into conversations with you about actually what what can we start to co-design together what can we how do we ask you to support us in deciding what our outcomes should be at, at service level at really really individual service levels